welcome to part one of me making this fashion plate. Uh, spoiler alert, I've already made the bodice. I just didn't get around to filming this intro until just now. Um, so a friend of mine, Logan, he came to me back in December and asked if I wanted to recreate a fashion plate. And I was like, heck yeah, because I had so much fun in October doing the historical Halloween uh, where I recreated this beautiful 30s autumnal costume and it was just so much fun so I wanted to try again. Let's get started. I searched through my patterns and books and I don't really have any Edwardian books but I do have this one here uh, which is the 1890s and I came across this pattern. It's got the gathered waist into the belt, which is what I was looking for, and it's also pretty flat. Up here, it also has this little box pleat that I thought could work for the two lines at the front, um, and it would also serve to hide the hooks and eyes uh, for that front closure. So I think I'm going to make this up just the way it is, just this bodice part, just the plain bodice part. And then I will go from there altering my block pattern based on what I figure out with this. So clearly it's a little small, especially in the arms, but it does give me a good idea on how I want to uh, alter my block pattern to look more Edwardian. Um, but yeah, I, I do like this little front box pleat. Thing. I don't know if I want to really sew it down like that. I was just experimenting. But yeah, I'm happy with the way this is going. I took my block pattern and traced it. And then I took this first pattern that I tried and I basically added the, uh, there we go. I added the box pleat to the front and then I extended the bottom out um, a little bit out this way since it was a little bit small and then extended it up into where it met my block pattern. And we'll try this now and see how that looks. I haven't figured out the v-neck yet. I figure once I get the rest of it then the v-neck will be easier to figure out. Now I just need to do the same to the back and we'll mock this up and see how it looks. So um, this is my second mock-up. I uh, ended up cutting the v and um, instead of doing the placket and that would close over here, I actually ended up doing the two box pleats like this. And then um, for the final one, I can add hook and eye tape to the lining. And I think that'll keep it together really nicely. Um, it actually fits really well. It looks really good. Um, I'm really impressed with myself. Oh, I made a mistake. Not a mistake, just I didn't think things through. When I decided to make the front closure, I thought that I would make the yoke and the fitted collar part of the lining. But if it's part of the lining and it splits up the middle, gonna have a middle seam. So there's three ways that I could deal with this. I could redraft the bodice to be back closing. The only problem is almost all the Edwardian bodices that I have seen are front closing. And I like the way that I have it. So I don't want to redraft it. I could 
make a wonky closure because a lot of Edwardian garments have wonky closures uh, to where it like closes up on the shoulder and then the collar go keeps continuing around to clasp at the back which is something that I could do except that I've seen that type of closure more on heavily decorated bodices and so I just wonder if this bodice with the few decorations would really look good like that. And then the third option is to make a gimp or chemisette or dicky, whatever you want to call it, uh, separate from the bodice, which I think that would probably be the easiest way to go and I think that's what I'm gonna do. Sucks because I wanted it all in one. But it's fine because then I could use it for other things in the future, right? So basically how I'm gonna make this gimp is I'm going to take my block pattern and cut it off about right here um, and then create a back button closure on the back and create a casing at the waist to tie it at the waist and that'll hold it down, it'll be easy to get on and yeah I don't think I'll add sleeves or anything because the bodice will cover that up. Well finished it. But I have to start all over. I was too lazy to put my corset on while I was making it and just assumed it would fit and of course it doesn't. See this blue line? That is where the shoulder is supposed to be. The shoulder's sitting about here right now. So I have to take it apart and make that adjustment. Um, and I also want to make it longer because I don't like where it's sitting right now. But hey, good first effort. So this is the second version of my GIMP. I actually like it so much better. Um, as you can see, I made it about waist length. Um, and I also ended up adding the collar on by hand and leaving it free in the back because I don't know if there's something weird with my back or what, but um, I just kept, it just kept pulling up the back of the shirt and giving me this like hunchback effect. So that's not what I wanted. And I knew this was something that garments from the time did, so I figured it would work. Um, I also ended up adding darts here in the back because again, for some reason, I just had like a whole bunch of random cloth here that I don't usually have in shirts when I use this pattern, but for some reason, I did this time around. Um, and yeah. Three buttons in the back and a waist tie and yeah it looks quite good. I wish I had those extant garments that I was like why would anyone buy those they're so expensive and you can't wear it. This is why Sam this is why for stupid things like how far up should the boning go in the back what should the lining even look like if this is right. I just did it because I just was basically like, well, I just need a fitted lining that I can base the rest of it around. Okay. I think I decided I'm just going to do it up the back about halfway, like where the darts end. I think that's logical. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's like my first like real attempt at 
historical accuracy, so it's not going to be perfect. Just let it not be perfect, Sam. We got the lining all together. I sewed in the hook and eye tape, and now I'm just working on the outer fabric of the bodice. Um, I have basted the arm size together and I have basted the back together. Now I'm just working on how I want the front to sit. Um, I left it long on purpose because I didn't exactly know how it was going to look with the lining underneath. But um, now what I've decided to do is cut this um, outer bodice to the length of the lining at the front and then I'm leaving this a little bit long. It curves down like this and gathers up so that it has a little poof in the front. Um, and now I just have to do it on this side and baste all of this down and then I will um, finish the waist with uh, bias binding and I guess work on the sleeves. I have no idea what I'm doing for the sleeves yet. After going through my sleeve collection, unfortunately, I have a lot of puffed sleeves, but not a lot of fitted sleeves. So this is what I came up with. I think I'm gonna do this sleeve and I may need to alter the sleeve head to fit, we'll see. And then I'm going to use this cuff. Sleeves are done. That took me way too many tries to set these sleeves. And I'm just kind of meh about the bodice right now. It looks better on me than it does on my dress form because it's not my size, but I just kind of want to give up. But we're going to press on. At this point, I was so tired and I just wanted to get it done. So I just went on Etsy and I bought this collar pattern from a seller named Ali Sprout, which I will link down below. This is what I'm doing for the collar trim. I cut out pieces of the velvet ribbon, the length that I needed them to be, and then I am just laying them on top of each other, right sides together, and I am sewing at a diagonal all the way around here, diagonals, um, so that when they are folded out, they create right angles. The only thing left to do was to make the little tie, which I made out of a cotton lawn, and now it's completely finished. This bodice actually took way more time and effort than I expected it to. I didn't expect it to be easy, but I didn't expect to have to like redo things several times. And what I didn't show you is I actually made the lining twice um, because the first time I just forgot seam allowance and then when I cut it out the second time I added seam allowance and I added seam allowance to the outside bodice too except for the arm side and the outside bodice why? I don't know! So my sleeves are sewn on with only a quarter inch seam allowance, um, but I finished them with bias tape so they won't fray, so that should work, but stupid mistakes. Stupid mistakes. Anyway, it turned out really nice. Um, I really like it so far, and I'm about to start on the skirt. Hopefully it's easier. Hopefully. My next video will be the uh, skirt, 
and the final reveal so I hope you stick around for that uh, if you like this video please like and subscribe and please comment because the more comments I get the more interactions I get the more this video gets seen by others and we can grow this channel which is you know hashtag goals <laughs> um, but I will see you next time bye